This screencast is on using dimensional analysis to solve math problems. Dimensional analysis is a method to solve problems in both math and chemistry, and it's a method to basically convert units. In chemistry, it's a method to convert both units and substances, and I'll explain this in a moment. Dimensional analysis is also referred to as the factor label method and the unit factor method. Let's tackle our first problem. Assume you are baking, which is real chemistry at work. It's a precise ap application of chemistry in which we have both units and we have a substance, which makes this a dimensional analysis of a chemistry or a chemistry problem. And it says that previously you determined that two and three quarters cups of flour weighs exactly 12 ounces. The recipe calls for two and a quarter cups of flours. To be precise, you want to weigh the flour. How many ounces of flour do you need? Well, we have one equality here, and we're trying to determine a second equality. And since we're working with a smaller number of cups of flour, we know it's going to weigh slightly less than 12 ounces. So let's set this up as a ratio and solve it. And we're going to solve it as a ratio first because perhaps you're already familiar with that. If you are not, this is something you can use for the rest of your life. You set one equality equal to the second equality. So on the top, we have two and three quarters cups of flour over 12 ounces. And then we're trying to determine the second equality, which is two and a quarter cups of flour over X ounces. We cross multiply it and we get X is equal to 9.8 ounces of flour. And the ratios work because they use equalities. And here's the equality right here. Now let's solve this using dimensional analysis. Uh, we're given two and one quarters cups of flour. That's what we're going to start with. And we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor. And we're going to get ounces of flour for an answer. Now let's look at the equality here down, down here at the bottom just for a moment. Equalities are converted to conversion factors during dimensional analysis. We know that two and three quarters cups of flour is exactly equal to 12 ounces of flour. If we set these on top of each other, it's the same as saying they're equal to one. And the same can be said of the inverse of it, 12 ounces of flour is exactly equal to two and three quarters cups of flour, which is also equal to one. Since they're both equal to one, we can uh, place this conversion factor uh, like we have here, or we can use the inverse of it. And they're both equal to one. It's like multiplying the first part of the problem by one. So let's get our pen out here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at cups of flour and we want these units to cancel so we want an equality here that we can eliminate units okay so the units are cups here's cups here and the substance is flour and flour the substance makes it a chemistry problem so when we multiply these numbers together we get units of ounces. And we get chemical substance of flour, which is right here. And the numbers, as we multiply them out, turn out to be 9.8. Let's look at a slightly more involved problem. In this one, we want to determine how many centimeters are in a yardstick. And we know, and this is something you should memorize, that one inch is exactly equal to 2.5 centimeters. We're only one of three countries in the world that use the uh, non-metric system, and this is very helpful to convert to metric metric system, which we use in this class, chemistry. This is exact. 
we're given units of a yard, which is this unit right here. The way we start this problem is we want units to cancel, so we multiply it by a conversion factor that allows the units to cancel. Yards, yards. In one yard, there's three feet. Next, we're going to convert it to inches because eventually we're going to convert it to centimeters. Feet, feet. And then we're going to convert inches to centimeters. Go inches, inches. And we're left with units of centimeters. When we do the math, it turns out to be 91.44 centimeters exactly. So a yard is slightly less than the 100 centimeters, which is a meter, which is approximately correct. Let's look at another problem, the football field length problem. A football field is exactly 120 yards long. How long is the field in meters? So we want our final answer in meters. We start with what we're given, 120 yards. We use conversion factors all the way across here to come up with meters. In the first conversion factor, we're gonna convert from yards to feet. So one yard is three feet. And we're gonna convert from feet to inches. One foot is 12 inches. And we're gonna convert from inches to centimeters. And 100 centimeters is one meter, which gives us our last unit, which is how the problem was stated and the answer that we desire for units. When we perform the math, we get 109.728 meters. That's an exact measurement. It's based on this conversion factor being exact as well as all of the other conversion factors are exact, so it turns out to be 109.728 meters exactly. For convenience, down here is an easy way to do the problems, so you don't have to do all these um, times symbols, you don't have to put this in. Uh, just set up as a grid, and it's assumed that all these units are multiplied. You keep track of this in a nice order, and the units just cancel. That's the dimensional analysis part of solving this problem. Do all the math, you only have one unit left, which is meters, and it comes out to this exactly again. Let's do one more problem. This one's the beer moderation problem. It says that spectators at the Bathurst 1000 in Australia are told to stick to just one slab of beer while at the racetrack. A slab of beer contains 24 cans of 375 milliliter stubbies. How many 16 ounce bottles are there in a slab of beer? We're given one slab. From our definition, we know there's 24 cans in a slab. So next we want to convert cans to milliliters, and it says a can is 375 milliliters. We're going to convert milliliters to liters because 1,000 milliliters is exactly one liter. And we're going to convert liters to quarts because we want the answer in the English system of measurement. And I had to look this up, I don't memorize this, but a liter is approximately equal to 1.057 quarts. That's a measured quantity, and it has significant figures to it. One, two, three, four significant figures. So the liters units cancel. And we know that a quart is equal to two pints, and a pint is equal to 16 ounces or fluid ounces specifically. And a 16 fluid ounce bottle is how we're asked to determine the problem. 
So we want number of 16 ounce bottles and we're left with that right here. We simply come across here, do the math. We see that 16 cancels with 16, so the math's a little bit simpler. And we get 19.02 bottles or 19 whole 16 ounce bottles, which curiously in Australia, they think they should limit their spectators to only 16 or 19 16 ounce um, bottles. Sounds like quite a bit. Hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching this screencast.